It's an exhibition which has been in development for a long, long time. In fact, I would even say that it kind of goes back to my first ever one-person show, which was called Past Imperfect Future Tense, which was in um, 1984 at the Black Art Gallery. And that was about my interest um, both in the way that um, histories are told, but also in the way we look at the future and project into the future. And so this is very much about those kind of ways of storytelling. Um, thinking about the past and how we think about history and how we think about um, the future from, from our position here in the present. In terms of new work, this particular show has two main brand new pieces. And one is called Jet Black Futures. Um, obviously, it takes its title from the title of the show. Um, and the other is, is In Search of Four Horses. And in a sense, those two works work together in that they are both about this act of attempting to predict particular versions of the future from the present. In terms of the work Jet Black Futures, it's very much about these kind of projected ideas from a group of fictional profit type figures thinking about the future in terms of, of the turning over of planetary power systems, um, in terms of the impact of global warming and climate change, etc. etc. Et so they are twelve, they are twelve strange, almost semi-abstract predictions of the future through these these kind of strange books which feature in the work. The other work, which is In Search of Four Horses, is completely different because in that work, it's about the way that, that a range of individuals see the future. It's based on the biblical metaphor, allegory of the four horsemen of the apocalypse, which was a particular way of attempting to look at the future. The key thing about the work as it came together is that it features no, no actual outdoor space at all. Um, the whole sense of, of kind of being locked inside and outside space becoming this sort of abstracted landscape. Um, um, that became quite key to the work. So you get this constant um, returning theme of a landscape which is an imagined landscape, it's a drawn landscape. And, and these kind of close-up views of a desk, of the kind of space of research. And so it's very much about that kind of experience of lockdown and um, the actual work was put together in its final phases when I actually had COVID <laughs> and was in lockdown <laughs> and so and I think that in retrospect that really affected the way that the work has evolved because um, it's much slower than other works that I've made it kind of attempts to give a lot more space to what those individuals are saying because I was really intrigued by this diverse range of views about the future. I thought that was the really important and core thing about this particular piece of work. I was always fascinated by the idea of Cassandra because obviously from, from the original Greek myth, she's this person who sees the future. Apollo puts this curse on her, um, which means that nobody believes her. And so this was very much this kind of image um, which we see now in terms of the way that sometimes environmentalists or people who are speaking about the future and attempting to warn us of impending danger are actually treated, treated as crazy people. And <laughs> can we talk about Don't Look Up? <laughs> the Netflix um, series just recently, which very much is about that. It's very much about the kind of Cassandra, the Cassandra type character who sees the future, literally in that the central female character sees the future. <laughs> and she sees this huge rock approaching the earth but nobody believes her. It's like very, very interesting. So I think the whole Cassandra thing is very much something which we find interesting in, the, in our contemporary epoch. So I think it's a really interesting and resonant idea, interesting character. <laughs>